You know, sometimes when you slip a shoe on and it just feels really nice, like just going on, whereas some, other times you're like, man, that does, this is gonna be a rough first impression run. This is sliding on and feeling like a, a, a little bit of a glove feel, just a nice, wow, they're, oh my goodness. So that's a good start. I must say the upper is feeling uh, nice and comfy so far for the Elevon 2. Just so you know, as far as cushion is concerned, it is falling into the high cushion category. It's not maximalist, it's, it's approaching maximalist, but it's not quite there. High cushion for that midsole, the highest stack height in the Pro Fly lineup. There we go, there we go. Hoka Elevon 2, first run, first impressions out there on the concrete, in the mud, in the snow, in the ice, but we survived out there in this neutral road running shoe from Hoka. So here's the deal, 16 miles, 730 a mile. There it is on your screen in kilometers. And I am ascending in my volume, actually, hold on. My, I'm gonna make a, don't worry, I'm gonna make a new poster. My poster got wet out here in the studio, but my volume continues to climb. We're right about, hopefully you can see that, we're right about here in the ascent to my peak volume, which means I'm starting to go through shoes a little bit quicker because the long runs are getting longer, the middle distance runs are getting longer, and I need to continue to watch my legs and protect them through this marathon training block. So right now, here's, I don't know about you, how you buy your running shoes, but here is my current uh, running warehouse shopping cart. You see it on your screen. So what I do is I do my research and then I put shoes into the shopping cart and then I let it sit for a couple days, actually about a week at this point. So yes, the Vimero 14, they have a new tongue on the Nike Vimero 14, so it's in my cart. I'm mulling it over if that is gonna be a shoe that I add back into the rotation for a long run shoe. You see, actually, the Rincon. This is the old Rincon that is beat up and dead. So yes, even though it's a lightweight um, shoe, so many people love the Rincon from 2019 from Hoka because it was it uh, could accomplish a lot of different tasks. So yes, it is in the running, in the shopping cart. And then lastly, oh yeah, the Asics Glide Ride. Anti up again with that. But the Hoka Elevon 2, by the end of this first impression video, I'll give you my thoughts if this could become a long run shoe for you okay some specs let's dive in five millimeter drop all right so 32 yeah 32 millimeter stack height in the heel 27 millimeter in the forefoot for that five millimeter slope and it's a uh, it's a high stack height but it's not a maximalist uh, stack height meaning like the bondi okay so it's not quite as tall as the bondi stack height uh for that weight we're looking at 10.1 ounces in men's size nine uh, and, and 286 grams and women's size seven, we're looking at 8.5 ounces or 240 grams. And let me just throw it on the scale real quick for you. I have my scale right here and see what it is in my size. So my size about 9.2 ounces or 264 grams. So that's, it's a little bit on the heavier side for a daily trainer or a long run shoe. Kind of, actually kind of like the Vimero 14. The Vimero 14 is also a heavier shoe, which I don't mind for long runs. I, I think for me, I'm okay with heavier shoes because it gets my legs, I believe, a little stronger so that when I do put on the lightweight racing shoes, it's time to let it rip. So it's a mesh upper, all right, pretty lightweight. Fairly breathable. My toes weren't getting, were not getting cold out there though today in the snow. Like I actually was shocked. My feet didn't even get very wet even though I was going through quite a few uh, puddles out there. Now, 
What's really throwing me for a loop is the eyelet chain. So it's a little crazy, but they're alternating between the eyelet chain and then this, um, I'm gonna call it a kind of a halfway gusseted tongue where it's alternating as you're going up the eyelet chain. And I must say, it threw me for a loop as I was lacing up inside. It was so comfortable. You actually heard me say it in there. Like As soon as I put the shoe on, I could feel the comfort through the upper and especially through the tongue. I was a little surprised and pleasantly surprised because I was frankly a little concerned at the complexity of the eyelet chain as it was coming out of the box. I was like, oh boy, this looks a little too, too much for me, but sure enough, it was so, so comfortable. Also on the upper, it's leaning in the minimalist direction, meaning I can squeeze right here and it's not too, remember in the Asics, uh, what was it, the Evo ride from a couple days ago, uh, you, I definitely could not do this in the Evo ride, meaning just pressing on the heel counter, it would not collapse at all. So here in the Evalon 2, it definitely is collapsing just you know easily and fine. Like it's a very, again, nimble, lightweight upper um, and the heel tab, so the, the back of the shoe, very comfortable, didn't have any issues with rubbing, with rubbing on the Achilles tendon for that heel tab. And moving on to that midsole of the Elevon 2, let's pull out the insole first, okay? So that's this guy coming out of the shoe. And yes, I can tell Hoka, you put a little more extra build quality and thought behind the insole, I like it. Nice and cushioned, uh, it just felt a little more uh, robust compared to the Rincon insole, which I hope is updated a little bit for the 2020 iteration. It's the ProFly midsole foam, okay? And I will say a very stable ride out there. It is a neutral, all right? We'll do the twist test. Not much of a twist actually, but it is a neutral road running shoe, but it felt very stable. It's the classic a wider landing platform through that outsole. Now about that ProFly midsole, it is the tallest stack height in that ProFly lineup uh, for Hoka, and there is not a ton of ground contact feel. So if you like a shoe that, you know, you feel like you're, you're a little more one with the ground, this is probably not the shoe for you. You feel like you're, you're, not, you're not one with the ground, you're above the ground, uh, riding through that rocker feel that Hoka is known for. And lastly, because I'm looking for a long run shoe, I'm looking for a shoe that has a little bit of forgiveness on these long runs. As the long runs go to 20 miles, 21, 22 miles, 23 mile long runs in this marathon training block, I just, I yearn. The legs, you know, the legs get tired. They, they get beat up and by the end of the training block or let's say like three quarters of the way through the training block, I personally yearn for a little bit of forgiveness through that midsole and I must say, this midsole is not too firm. I was reading reports from other people out there that they thought the midsole was firm. It is, but it isn't. Compared to the Mach 3, it's like not even close to the Mach 3 and I realize these are two different category shoes, but I must say the, the midsole was forgiving and it felt uh, not too forgiving, but it, just enough where I think it can pull off a long run for 21, 22 miles for me. And moving on to the outsole, the bottom of the shoe. So it has this crystal transparent rubber that's the blue here exposed on the outsole, which is covering the, the exposed ProFly midsole foam. What's really interesting are these deep grooves, all right, you can see them there on your screen, these deep grooves uh, through the forefoot. And I'm still trying to figure them out. It's just my first run. By the way, this is not my full review. That'll happen after 50 miles. Uh, so, and people were uh, a little concerned that these deep grooves were gonna catch a lot of rocks. I don't have any rocks so far, so that is good news. But I'm wondering if those grooves are gonna help give you a little more, um, a little more control, and maybe they're going for ground contact feel, but a little more control through your toe off. So there's a little more flexibility and nimbleness through that toe off, through your foot strike. Maybe that's what they're thinking. I'm not exactly sure, but I felt fine out there. Uh, it, we, even with those grooves through that forefoot, I, I didn't even really notice them at all. And then lastly, you have a, a decoupled groove here through the heel, just to give you a little weight reduction. And again, probably a little bit of nimbleness through that heel landing. For that fit, I went true to size, oh, spot on. No issues with the fit, and a lot of times, Hoka shoes can run a little narrow for me through the toe box. No issues at all, they, it was spot on, literally spot on. So that was good news. 
for comfort, I'm going with amazing comfort through the lockdown, specifically the tongue of the shoe. I love it. I love it. For the midsole comfort and the overall ride, I'm going to say like six and a half, maybe seven out of 10. It's not plush, but I think it's, I think it's going to work. I really do think it's going to work for that long run category. For that positive, I'm going to say a smooth transition through the foot strike. Like it, it was smooth right at the beginning of the run. I could tell this is a smooth rider. For the drawbacks, I don't know at this point. Maybe after 50 miles, I'll have something, but no drawbacks after my first run. And also durability predictor. I'm going with 400 miles. That's my gut. Again, I can't really, I'm not going to take the shoe to 400 miles, but just looking at the outsole, I'm going to say that 400 mile range is about the, the amount of volume you will get out of the Elevon 2. And yes, how will I use the Elevon 2 moving forward? Absolutely for long runs and middle distance runs, but I'll probably lean in the direction of my long run shoe. So 20 plus miles. Uh, and who is this shoe best for? Someone that likes a nice, stable ride. Uh, not looking to go crazy fast on your long runs. Just a nice, steady, stable ride shoe for a long run. Now, how about that price point? Oh boy, $160. A little hefty, a little hefty for me. I'm thinking more in the 150, 145 range. Who knows? Maybe the dirt, maybe they're thinking the durability will be further than 400 miles. I'm not sure. Maybe it's because it is a pretty tall stack height. 160 is pushing it for me. Um, yeah, and especially, especially because Hoka's uppers are not known for a ton of life expectancy. I'll put it that way. Uh, a lot of time now, maybe there's maybe this upper has been really improved, this mesh upper, but whoo, that's pushing it that 160 price range. And that uh, question of the day, Hoka fans, time to stand up down in the comments. Let us know why you love Hoka running shoes. Make your case down in the comments. Question of the day, part two. Who has never run in a Hoka running shoe? Guess what? It's a newer company, newer. They're, uh, well, they're about 10 years old now, but they're still fairly new considering some companies are, you know, over 50 years old. So, but who has never tried a Hoka running shoe? Let us know and let us know maybe why they haven't made it into your running shoe rotation. Thanks for being here. That was my first impressions. I think, everyone, I think we're going to get to 50 miles in this shoe. I really do, um, especially as my volume, again, continues to climb. I'm pretty excited. I must say, I'm pretty excited. All right, everyone, there you go. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Another first impression, onward and upward. Uh, don't you love YouTube? We can communicate here on the interwebs. It is a great, great thing. All right, everyone, we're going to toss it back on the right to my first impression of the Hoka Mach 3. That'll be on the right-hand side, and then we'll toss it back to a 2019 full review of the Hoka Rincon, two shoes I mentioned here in the studio today. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.